All right, let's talk about the solutions to the second midterm for the afternoon class. So the second problem was about market segmentation and in particular about the markup pricing formula. So if you remember this equation that we talked about before the break, uh, it tells us that the elasticity is everything you need to know to determine which market gets a higher price. So we need to compare the elasticities. And in this case, computing the elasticities is very simple. It turns out that the elasticity is in the formula, the elasticity in the first market is going to be equal to minus two, and the elasticity in the second market is going to be equal to minus five, which means that the second market is more elastic and therefore receives a lower price. Problem three was completely straightforward. I gave you the easiest market I could think about and you just have to solve everything we've done for a market. So I, the marginal cost is equal to zero, so in a competitive market, the price would also be equal to zero because that's the only place where the demand intersects marginal cost. The quantity would be equal to two. And then the surplus would be given by the area of the triangle, which is going to be two times two divided by two, uh, which is going to be equal to two. Now, uh, moving over to a monopoly, for the monopolies, we have to write down the profits. Um, Taking first order conditions, we get that the quantity is going to be equal to one. Using inverse demand, that means that the price has to be equal to one. So we can draw a graph. Um, we can draw a graph to figure out what what the total surplus is going to be. With a slightly higher price, of course, the total surplus is going to be a little bit less. We're going to have to add up the profits, which are going to be that rectangle of area one times one, plus the consumer surplus, which will be one times one divided by two. So we get a total surplus of three halves. So for the Cournot duopoly, we do something similar. We write the profit function, we take first third condition, but now instead of getting the answer, we just get the best response. And in order to get the equilibrium quantity, we actually have to uh, solve for the equilibrium by setting Q equal to its own best response, which gives us that a quantity of two thirds and in the inverse demand that will give us a price of four thirds. But then when I started drawing my graph, I realized that's a mistake because two thirds is the quantity that each firm is producing. So in order to get the total quantity, I have to multiply by two. So the total quantity is going to be twice that. So it's going to be four thirds, um, which means that the equilibrium price, it's going to be two minus four thirds, which is two thirds. So now we're in good shape. We can, we can draw a graph uh, for Cournot and we're going to see that the profits is going to be two thirds times one third and the consumer surplus is going to be two minus two thirds times four thirds divided by two, um, which is going to give us a total of eight, 16 over nine. Finally, uh, for Stackelberg competition, the best response is going to tell us directly what the follower is going to do, choosing a best response to what the leader does. So we have to plug in that best response in terms of Q2 in the profit function of the leader. Um, so let's let's do that. We get a quadratic equation as usual. Taking first order conditions, it's going to tell us what the quantity of the leader is. In this case, one. Plugging that into the best response function tells us that the follower wants to produce one half. For a total production of three halves, going back to the inverse demand function, it means that the market price is going to be two minus three halves, which is equal to one half. So we're in good shape. We can draw a graph. Um, the the profit in this case it's going to be one half times three halves and and the and the consumer surplus is going to be uh, three halves times two minus one half which is three halves divided by two so we get a total of nine eighths plus three fourths which is six eighths for a total of 15 over eight now for problem four unfortunately there is a little bit of ambiguity you could have thought of competitive to mean uh, either the competitive quantity from the competitive equilibrium or the duopoly quantity. I'm going to solve it as stated with the competitive quantity, which is two, so one half of it, it's, it's one. So if both firms produced half of the monopolistic quantity, they would get each half of the monopolistic profit, so it should get, um, it should get one half. Uh, in, in, if each of them produced half of the competitive quantity, the total quantity would be two, the price would be zero and profits would be zero. Uh, now, if one of them produces one unit and the other one one half, then the price would be two minus three halves, which is one half. And then the profits would be one for whoever is producing more and um, and one, one, one half for whoever is producing more and one fourth for the pers person that's producing one half. 
Okay, so there we have it. That's 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 the table. Once you have the table, you do the same thing with the class. The value for complying would be just one over one minus delta times one half. You get one half forever. If you deviate, given this table, you would get one half on, on the first period. Um, so it's just one half, and then forever after you get zero. So that term cancels out, and your profit is just one half. So our incentive constraint requires the first value to be greater than the second value which is going to happen after some algebra if and only if the discount factor is not negative. And that, that's the answer of the problem as stated. I will also consider correct solutions uh, if you solve the problem the way we solved it in class, by using the duopoly half of the duopoly quantity instead of the competitive quantity, in which case you should have gotten delta greater or equal to one half. Or if you did something a little bit more sophisticated and you actually figured out what would be the optimal deviation if, if the other firm was producing the monopolistic quantity. So if you did either of those things, you should you should be fine. And um, that's it. That was the exam. On our next video, we'll start talking about mechanism design. Uh, be sure to read the lecture notes beforehand. See you next time.